Hi again, here we are to talk about Xcode. And uh, when I began this series of, of videos, I wanted to just talk about the keyboard. And I had the specific goal of using the date picker to put the date into the keyboard. And right now, you can just type anything into the keyboard. So if I, if I click on uh, test there or run, you know, you can see I can just type anything in here. But what I want to do is I want to put the date in here. Um, in Storyboard, you can see that um, the text field has a choice for keyboards. So if I, if I scroll down here under Properties and I select the keyboard, you can see it says Keyboard Type. And so you can choose one of these keyboards. There's a Web Search, a Twitter keyboard, a Decimal Keyboard, um, Name, Phone Number, Number Pad, right? There's no date choice, though. Let's try the Twitter one just for fun, right? So I'll, uh, I'll test it for Twitter here. You know, and you can see these are all different, right? Um, so the Twitter keyboard here looks like this, right? Oh, it's got the hash thing and the at, right? So, you know, and, and you could set this to a uh, number pad, too. Um, you're probably familiar with those. But the thing is, um, I'm going to switch it back to default right now. But the thing is, none of these are the date, right? So I want to be able to put a date in here. So how do we do that? The um, the keyboard has an inner, or the text field, I should say, the text field has an interesting property called input view. And the input view is a view that you can use as an alternate input. So essentially, the software keyboard that we see on the screen is a view, right? And what the text field is doing is it's using that default keyboard view, right? Um, you know, or one of the views that you chose off the menu, like the Twitter keyboard, right? But we can assign it any view, right? Like we can make our own custom views and have the text field use our view for the input, okay? So um, how do we do that? Well, um, what we need to do first is we need to uh, find out when the keyboard is going to begin editing. And if you recall from the previous video, um, we do that with the text field delegate, okay? So... Um, we've got text field should return, but you know what? There's another delegate method called text field um, did begin editing. Okay, so I'm going to choose this one right here. Text field did begin editing, right? And what I want to do is I want to first create a date picker. So I'll say date picker equals UI date picker. Okay, so now we just made an instance of the date picker. And then what I want to do is I want to say um, text field, and we're this will be our date text, right? But since it's coming through this delegate method, we're, we can use the, this property here, right, to represent it. So we'll say um, text field dot input view equals date picker. Okay, so there's our, our date picker, right? We have to do a little more work than this, but this should get us started. So let's give it a, a test, right? So I'll, I'll click Run here, and, and I click in here, and now the, the, the input view down here doesn't look like the keyboard anymore. It looks like the date picker. Yeah, it's kind of a nifty little way to set the date, right? Um, you could pick any date. Now, my problem is it's not showing the date in here, and I can still type on the keyboard and get the, the information, right? Um, and then if I, if, luckily it still closes too if I tap the buttons, right? So, uh, so what are we going to do? Um, how do we get the date picker connected to the text field? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to add a new method to the date, to the, uh, to the date picker. Or we're not a new method, we're going to add a, a, like a, uh, an event me message to it. So when you when the date the value in the date picker changes, we're going to update the text in the text field to show the new value, right? So uh, so what will we do? We'll say um, date picker dot add target. Okay, so you just start typing add, and then you should see add target on there. So choose add target, and what does add target do? Well, add target sets up an event. So it takes three parameters. Um, the target is who is going to receive the event message, and we'll say self. So our view controller will receive an event message from the date picker. And then selector or action, right? So the selector is the action. Uh, actually, the action is what's going to happen when, you know, when something happens at the date picker. 
and then um, the selector is the name of the method that we want the date picker to call inside the target, which is self. Okay, so the method that we want to call is going to be we just type it in here as a string. So we're going to say date picker changed. Okay, and then you need to put a colon on the end because this method will have a parameter attached to it and the colon represents that. So you got to have the colon here. Okay, so now this is just a, a, a string, but we'll have to make a method. It'll have to be func date picker changed parentheses with some parameter in there. See how it's got the colon right here, right? That's, that's the, the idea. It's representing the parameter, right? And then uh, for control events. So uh, the UI control event says like what events that, you know, what the name of the event message is that this is sending out. And there's several different event messages. So you can say like when something touches, when you change, when you, you know, touch up, touch down, you know, stuff like that. Um, with the date picker, the one that we want is we want um, value changed. So I'm going to type dot value changed here. Okay. So let's go over that again. Um, we've got a date picker. We're going to add a target to it. So the date picker can target something or send an event to something. This is the target is self, right? So it's going to send to our view controller. The method or the action that it's going to do is this is the, the name of the, the function that it's going to call on in the target. And then when is it going to send the message? <coughs> it's going to send the message when its value is changed, okay? So let's put um, this function right below the other one, right? So what we'll do is we'll say function. And I'm just going to paste this date picker change to make sure that I get it spelled right. And then I'll type the parentheses in the curly brackets there so my function is complete. Um, and this function, since it has the colon here, we need to include a, uh, you know, a parameter here. And essentially what this is going to be is it's going to be the date picker. So what I'll do is I'll put, usually what they do in, I, in iOS is they use sender as the sender for the event. And then colon, we know it's going to be type UI date picker. So I'm going to put in UI date picker here. Okay. And there we go. So whenever the date picker is changed, what do we do? Why don't we say date text dot text equals. And then, you know, if we have a, a sender here and it's a UI date picker, we can get, get the date and put the date in there. Now, the problem is we can't put the date directly into the text field. We need to convert this date into a text you know, text format first. So why don't we do this? Why don't we say um, let formatter equal ns date formatter, and then we'll say formatter dot um, wait, what is it? Uh, date style equals, and then we can use one of the date styles. Why don't we do the long style? <clears throat> okay, and then over here. Instead of just doing sender date, what we'll do is we'll say formatter dot um, uh, string from date. And then inside here, the date is going to be sender dot date. Okay? So what did we do? We made, a, we made a, a target here that's listening for a value changed. So with the date picker, anytime you drag those little spinners right to change the date then the value is changed and then it will call this method right date picker changed method send itself along as the sender and then this function is going to make a formatter we'll set the style on the formatter and then um, we'll use the formatter to convert the date to a string and then we're going to get the date from the sender so sender comes with a date because it's a UI date picker. It knows what the date is, right? And then we put that into the text field. So let's give that a test, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll run my project again. There it is. I'll click in here. There's my date. I'm going to choose Wednesday. Oh, look, Wednesday, December 2nd, 2015. Let's make it the 12th. Um, oh, I guess that's the time maybe. Oh, you know what? I guess this is the the. It's not showing the the the, the date there. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this is the time, like twelve oh eight. So I, I my date format's not showing the time, but it's showing December ten, 
right? It doesn't show the AM, PM. We, I guess we could do that. We need a different date style. But anyway, you get the idea. And now I can click outside here and the date picker closes, okay? So anyway, so there's our, there's our basic idea for using the, um, the date picker. And I think that's really clean and nice. Um, you know, you can do more with this, but this is like a really simple idea and we really didn't write that much code. So, um, so anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that's helpful to you guys.